Hey, welcome to your maths class. Today we are going to study the chapter number and our basic uh, arithmetic is our topic. So let's get towards our topic. What is basic arithmetic? You can see I've written division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So let's get started with multiplication. So what is multiplication? Multiplication is a mathematical arithmetic operation on a pair of numbers to derive a third number called a product. To do multiplication, we study multiplication tables. So how do we get the third product? You can see here that I have given an example. In this example, you can see that there are two coefficients. One is three and the other is five. So what we do is we call one a multiplicand and we call other the multiplicator. And what we get as a result is our product. So these coefficients multiply. How do you pronounce it or call it? We can say that this is five times three or in the other sense, we can say that three times five. It both of them will give the same result that is 15. So we can consult table of five or we can consult table of three. Both will give us the same output. Here you can see the table of three. So how do we uh, multiply? 3 multiplied by 0 will give us 0, 3 multiplied by 1 will give us 3, 3 multiplied by 2 will give us 6. How do we get the, these values? So let me tell you that anything multiplied by 0 will give us the value 0 because nothing can, and 0 have no value. And whenever we multiply anything with 1, we get the value itself. That is if we multiply 3 with 1, we will get 3. If we multiply 2 with 1, we get 2, which means 3, 3 is 1 times 3. That is, we get 3 only one time. And when we do 2 times 3, we get 3 twice. That is, 3 plus 3 is 6. I hope you are getting what I am trying to explain. So now let's move forward. Now you can see that I am going to multiply a two digit number with a single digit. That is 15 multiplied by 8. So what we actually do here is we first multiply 8 with the first digit that is 5 and what we get is 40. 8 multiplied by 5 will give us 40 and then what we do is we multiply 8 with the 10th digit, 10th digit that is 1 and 0 which will give us 80 and then what we do is we add these values up that is we take the sum of 80 and 40 which will give us 120. Now what we do is first we multiply 8 with 5 then we multiply 8 with 10 and then we add up both the values and we get the answer 120. Now let me explain to you how to multiply a three digit number with a single digit. Let's move towards this thing. We have here 628 multiplied by 7. Now what we do is we multiply 7 with 8 and we will get the value 56. So we need to write 6 at the bottom and then we put 5 as a carry on the next digit. Then we multiply 7 with 2. What we get the answer is 7 multiplied by 2 is 14. Now we will add 5 and 14 and we get 19. And then we will do is we will write 9 at the bottom and then 1 will go as a carry on the next digit that is 6. Then we multiply 7 with 6 which will give us the answer 42 and then we add this 1 and 42 and we get the answer 43. So altogether 628 multiplied by 7 will give us the answer 4396. Now this was a better approach. Now the other approach we can use is we do is we add the units digit, the tens digit and the hundreds, hundreds digit that is 620 and 8 and then we multiply each separately. 7 multiplied by 8 will give us 56. 7 multiplied by 20 will give us 140. 7 multiplied by 600 will give us 4200. When we add these values up, we will get 4396. I hope you are getting my point. This is not so difficult, very easy. 
these are some of the example questions which you can solve yourself for your own practice. Now let's move towards division. What is division? Division is a mathematical arithmetic operation on a pair of numbers to calculate the number of times one number is contained within another one. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to check how many times a value can be contained within another number. Let's move to an example. Here we have a number 20. We have 20 dots. And what we have done is we have packed five dots in a pair of each, which means we have four pairs of five dots. Now what we are trying to check is that we are trying to check that how many times 5 can be contained in 20. So when we pack these pair of 5 dots each, we come to know that we can 5 can be contained 4 times in 20. Now let's move towards another example. Here we have the example 7 divided by 2. Now what you need to do is you need to check how many times 7 can contain 2. So first of all you need to check table of 2 and you need to see whether 7 is part of the table or not. So we can see that 2 multiplied by 1 will give us 2, 2 multiplied by 2 will give us 4, 2 multiplied by 3 will give us 6 and 2 multiplied by 4 will give us 8. So we come to know that 7 is not the part of uh, table of 2. So we can divide it in another way. When we divide it, we come to know that the nearest value is 3. 3 times 2 will give us 6. So we are left with only one value, which will be the remainder. So remainder is the value when one value is not the part of the not the part in the table of that value which means that 7 is not a part of the two's table so we need to check that the lesser value that is nearest to 7 which is 3 and what is left is 1 to reach 7 so 3 is the 3 is our quotient and 1 is our remainder. Now we have another value in which we can see that we are trying to divide a two digit number with a single digit number. Here we are trying to divide 16 by 3. So first of all what we need to do is here we need to check whether 1 is part of the table of 3. So we just come to know that 1 is less than 3 so it can never be the part of the table of 3 and 1 cannot be contained in 3 so we need to move to the second digit we now use both the digits that is 1 and 6 16 we need to check how many times 3 can be contained in 16 so as we can see that 16 is not part of the table of 3 so what we do is we we need to check the value which is nearest to 16 and less than 16 as it and is the part of the table of 3 so that is 15 when we multiply 5 by 3 we get 15 so 5 is the quotient here and 15 is written below and then what we need to do is we need to subtract 15 from 16 and we get the remainder 1 and this is the answer of this division problem. Here we have a practice question. The question is Richard paid 56 pennies for 7 pencils. The cost of each pencil was the same. Work out the cost of 4 of these pencils. So let's move towards the solution. Solution is the total price of 7 pencils is 56 penny. Price of one pencil can be calculated by dividing 56 by 7, which means total price was of 7 pencils was 56. So we need to divide, to check the price of one pencil, we need to divide this whole value into 7 parts to check the price of each pencil. 
So price of one pencil is eight pennies. Now the question is work out the cost of four of these pencils. So as we know that price of one pencil is eight pennies. To check the price of four pencils, we need to multiply eight with four. So we get the price of four pencils that is 32 pennies. I hope you understood this question. Now these are some of the questions which you need to do yourself for your own practice. You, as you know, practice makes the man perfect. So you need to keep on working. If you stop working, you will get everything out of your mind. Here's another practice question. I have done it in another, another way. Fatma bought 48 teddy bears at 9.55 pound each. Work out the total amount she paid. So we come to know that price of one teddy bear is 9.55 pound. To check the price of 48 teddy bears, it is so simple. You just need to multiply 9.55 with 48. So I have multiplied here. What I have done is I have divided 9.55 into its units digit, its tens digit, and its hundreds digit. And I have also divided 48, the total amount of teddy bears, into its units digit and tens digit, that is 40 and 8. Now what you need to do is, as you can see in the table, I have multiplied 900 with 40, 50 with 40, and 5 with 40. And I have multiplied 900 with 8, 8 with 50, 8 with 5. Now what I get the products are 36,000, 2,000, 200, 7,200, 400 and 40 respectively. So now what I need to do is I need to add all these values up and what I get the answer is 45,840. As you can see that the decimal value is having two digits on its right, on its right side. So we add a digit, uh, we add a decimal on uh, before the uh, two digits from the right side that will make 458.40 and we get our answer it's not a difficult question i hope you got it now the next part is fatma sold all the teddy bears for a total of 696 pound she sold each teddy bear for the same price Work out the price at which Fatma sold each teddy bear. So we get the statement that number of teddy bears Fatma sold are 48. Total price of 48 teddy bears is equal to 696 pound. As you can see that 48 teddy bears altogether make 696 pounds. So the price of one teddy bear will be 696 divided by 48. We divide the price of 696, um, the amount of 696 into 48 to get the price of one teddy bear. And as a result, after dividing, we get 14.50 pounds. So you must be imagining how did we get that. So let's move towards the solution. Here is the solution. We divided 696 with 48. You must be imagining how to do this division because it is quite a uh, little bit lengthy and we are dividing a three digit number with a two digit number. No, it is not difficult at all. First of all, what we need to do is as we are having a two digit uh, as a dividend and a two, uh, sorry, a three digit as a dividend and two digit as a divisor. Here we need to see that we need to do first we need to check the first two digits of the dividend that is 69 so according to our estimate we can see that if we multiply 48 with 2 that value is going to be greater than 69 so that will be useless to write it over here so we will multiply 48 with 1 and we will get we need to subtract 48 from 69 to get 21. As we get 21, this 6 in the dividend will come straight away down. Now we have the value 216. We need to check whether it is part of the table of 48 or not. So according to our estimate and what we have uh, according to our homework, we can see that 216 is not the part of 48's table. So we need to value, we need to check the value that is nearest to the to 216 and less than 216 and 
that is part of the table of 48. So when we multiply 48 with 4, we get a value 192. When we subtract 192 from 216, we get 24. So now what we need to do is, we come to know that 24 is less than 48. And now we can see that 24 is the remainder, but the question is not solved yet. So to get an accurate or precise answer, we can do another thing. What we have done here is, we have written a zero after 24. We have made it now a 240. And what, how can we do that? We need to add a decimal after 14 in the quotient. And when we add a decimal, we add a zero here in the remainder. Now, we can see that 240 is part of 48's table. When you multiply 48 with five, we get the value 240. Now, we can see that after subtracting 240 from 240, we get the remainder zero, and our answer is 14.50. I hope you understood this question. It was not that difficult, only it needs practice. Now, this is another question in which the question is canal board for a hire 1785.00 pounds for 14 days. What is the cost per day of hiring the canal boat? So we come to know that rent for 14 days is equal to 1785 pounds. And rent for one day is 1785 divided by 14. And now after dividing, we come to know that rent for one day is equal to 127.5 pounds. So how did we come to know that? We did this division here and we got our answer. I hope now you are capable of dividing. Let's move forward. And finally, we are done with our lecture. I hope you will try to follow my lectures to get good at maths and be a perfectionist at mathematics because without maths, a man is totally dull. So the message of the day is, it is better to be a failure at something you love than to be a success at th something you hate. George Burns. Thank you, have a wonderful day. Hope to see you again.